So, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, where do most of the uh, oil spill into the ocean come from? Uh, when a tanker crashes and releases uh, millions of liters or gallons into the ocean, it makes for a horrible scene because you see animals covered in oil, birds unable to fly, fish dying and so on. So it's uh, not a fun thing to see, right? And beaches get uh, washed up with oil. Uh, the one that became very famous in the recent times was the so-called Exxon Valdez oil spill in the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, just after it loaded, uh, it came out into the ocean, was trying to go out to the uh, um, refinery in California, I think, and it saw an iceberg and tried to move quickly away and hit a, uh, a shoal in the ocean. Filled, uh, spilled about 44 million liters uh, of oil into Prince William Sound, Alaska. And this has become kind of a good uh, case study to look at how to treat oil spills. It turns out that whatever we do is often not the best way to treat it in the long term. Okay? Uh, as we said, uh, oil is a hydrocarbon. If you leave it alone, it will get eaten up by the microbes that eat this hydrocarbon, this form of hydrocarbon, but of course, uh, it can create uh, massive ecological damage in the meantime anyway, so we want to uh, do something uh, about it. So here is the map. It went from Prudhoe Bay to Valdez, uh, pretty close to the place where it loaded, and then it hit uh, something at the bottom. and it became a big case and so on and so forth. Here are some of the images. The other notable spills uh, when Saddam Hussein's people, army was leaving Kuwait after getting defeated. Uh, they started uh, setting fires to the uh, oil wells and they released uh, almost ni more than 900 million liters. Okay, that's 20 times the Exxon Valdez. Okay, that's really, really nasty thing. Uh, and the other notable oil spills in Gulf of Mexico, the Deep Horizon we already mentioned, uh, spilled uh, 780 million liters uh, uh, because the deep water offshore uh, rig could not be capped. Finally, a robot was able to do that and you can see how the uh, oil spill uh, uh, spread across because of the circulation and so on. It had many complicated issues because a lot of it is evaporated because of the very warm temperatures in the region. So the air quality or coastal cities like Houston was really bad for some time because of the uh, evaporated oil coming in the air and so on and so forth. And a lot of times the companies that own these uh, tankers or the uh, drills would pay for it but obviously that's billions of dollars they can afford it they are rich companies but it's not always easy to get rid of all of the uh, oil takes a long time okay the other uh, spill from uh, 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 when was this I think 1989 no it was before so probably 1970s uh, Mexican oil spill. But let's look at the more interesting point. Where do most of the uh, oil spills into the ocean come from? Okay, Exxon Valdez is here at 44 million. Uh, okay, 1979. Ishtok, Ishtok, I don't know how it's pronounced, Spanish word. Um, 530 million liters, Deepwater Horizon 780, Persian Gulf War, uh, 908 million liters. But uh, if you look at just the average annual spillage from natural seeps and human activities such as transportation, what does that mean? Whenever it rains, sometimes you can see that the road becomes very slick and oily. This happens a lot in places like DC where the rain is very, not, it's not a monsoon season, right? So it's dry for a while and then it rains. Um, the drip, drip, drip from the cars and vehicles actually contributes a lot to 
the wa the oil that washes into coastal waters okay that's not a small amount so it's 288 million liters per year coming from uh, this is the annual spillage coming from just this small sources that we don't even think about okay and there are natural seeps in the ocean as well but uh, when it is in small quantities and slow rates, they can be consumed equally fast by these uh, microbes. So they are not necessarily a big problem, but they can be. Okay. Um, as I said already, these are made of uh, hydrocarbons and it's basically uh, food. They are biodegradable, so there are uh, microbes that uh, eat them. And there are companies that actually produce uh, these microbes that you can buy. So imagine a can of microbes coming and spraying it on the water where it's uh, there's been an oil spill. But how do you clean the oil sp uh, spills? Uh, there are various ways. Oil generally tends to float on the water so you can sweep it up. Uh, but if it gets onto the beach, there were attempts made to blast it into little tiny droplets using steam which turned out to be a bad idea because it just breaks into tiny pieces, seeps into the sand and after a few years it co coagulates back and then you begin to get uh, oil in the sand again. So it's better to let natural processes do that sometimes. But when you wash, when you have to wash birds like this which have been soaked in oil, it turns out that the Dawn dishwashing liquid is actually one of the good products that helps clean the birds like this. It's a, it's a very labor intensive process. You have to uh, put the Dawn dishwashing liquid with water into the wings, clean it up and then multiple cycles of other treatments and so on and so forth. So bioremediation is the technical term for uh, using bacteria and fungi to biodegrade the oil. What happens over time? So this is an example from Exxon, uh, Exxon Valdez. 1989 was when this oil spill happened. So bald eagle population crashed, but slowly by 1998 they have uh, they had recovered to the previous level and they were removed from the endangered list. Uh, cormorants crashed, recovered, but then there is other reasons why it is uh, dropping again. Uh, the harbor seals there was a 12 percent decline and they never recovered because they got hit by some other disease okay and you can see that the um, other things like pacific herring have also collapsed related to disease this is where it gets complicated because when you add huge amounts of chemicals and you have global warming and other things as we said before we don't know how one pollutant combines with the other pollutant pollutant or on the long time scales what it does by uh, photo photolysis or degradation because of light and so on so the disease pressure itself may be related to the pollution or this pollution may be combining with other pollution to create disease pressure because certain pathogens and microbes grow in conditions that are suitable for them but kill somebody else right this is very common Okay, so the situation is obviously very complicated. Nonetheless, uh, rules have been made now that the tankers have to have a double hull so that they don't, uh, the oil doesn't easily spill out if they crash uh, along the way or at a coast or hit a reef uh, or whatever. So some regulations have been made now for oil tankers. Um, going across the oceans carrying oil. We obviously depend on oil and oil has to be transported long distances from places where it's produced to places where it's refined and distributed and so on and so forth. So parts of human cycle is that we need energy but can we do it without polluting the ocean? That's always the key question. And how the pollution cascades into various forms that we are not always aware of.